This is a landing page that I was able to create in less than five minutes, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. Landing pages are a great middle ground between a sign-up form and a full-blown website. While a form is a great start, it might not be enough to get someone to give you their email. And on the other side, a website can be so complicated that you end up delaying your launch. The issue is that a lot of creators spend so much time focusing on the wrong things on their landing pages and end up wasting time and lowering their conversion rate. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing best practices so you can focus on what matters, creating a landing page that converts. To get started, let's jump into our ConvertKit account and go to Grow and Landing Pages and Forms. We're gonna click Create New, and we wanna do a landing page. From here, you can see there are dozens of different landing pages, and you can actually sort by categories. I really like this Cedar template right here. Whichever template you wanna choose, you can preview it first by clicking on Preview. And I like this one because it's pretty versatile. It could serve as a wait list, as an event page, and everything in between. So I'm gonna click on Choose at the top right here. And so the first thing we wanna do is rename this landing page for whatever incentive or lead magnet that I'm gonna be delivering to my audience. I've got a Notion weekly template that I have created specifically for work from home dads. So I'm gonna just call this Notion weekly templates. Now, before we actually write the main heading of what this is gonna be, there's a mistake that a lot of creators make that keep anyone from even going to what the subheading is going to be. I could write, download the Notion task calendar and manager that will give you everything you need to nail being a work from home dad. Or I could say, boost productivity and family time as a work from home dad which one do you think is gonna get more conversions? I think the second one, because it's actually speaking more directly to what a work from home dad wants. And of course I could test this later by changing the headlines and seeing if I get more or less conversions as a result. But only mentioning the results can be kind of vague. And so the subheading is a great place to make clear how you are going to deliver that result. So here I'm gonna write the one notion template that gives you everything to manage your responsibilities and balance work and family. Now without color photos and videos, our landing page is gonna look a little dull, maybe not enough to draw a visitor in and leave their email, but you don't wanna add so much media that your page loads slowly because 53% of mobile users will abandon a website if it takes longer than three seconds to load. And it's not just the loading speeds, the right look of your landing page can significantly increase signups. And if you get the wrong look, your visitors may feel lost and wondering if they even came to the right place place. If you've already got brand colors and brand imagery, include them here. So to make things easier, I'm going to save my brand colors to my brand palette. I know I'm going to change the color of this sign up button. So I'm going to click there and then click on background color. And then I already have my brand color saved here. But if you don't, you'll just click on edit saved colors. And then you can add and edit the hex code of whatever colors your brand has and then jump back into your landing page and then assign it there. Now these colors are going to be available anytime I want to pick a color. In this case, since I have a darker orange, I can also change my font color to white. And you'll see I've got my colors down there. I don't want to use one of those colors for here. I just want to use white. And I think that looks good. Now, if I scroll down, I want to change this image it doesn't really match what I am doing. It is a mountain. So if I go to general styles up here, it's going to show me the image background, and then I can upload an image. And to make sure you're not losing out on conversions, you don't want to upload a massive image that's going to make your web page load slowly. We recommend keeping your images to these resolutions right here, depending on if they're landscape, portrait, or square. So the images are gonna be sharp enough, but they're not gonna be too big that they slow down the loading time. And if you don't wanna deal with any of that stock image sites like Unsplash, provide images that are practically ready to go, and they can be accessed directly inside of this editor. Click over here on the left to pull up the Unsplash graphics, and I am gonna search work from home. As I look through these images, I'm trying to be mindful of the story that this image tells. If I pull up this image right here on the right, it looks like a dad who's working from home and it's got a kid, it's work from home, but it kind of gives off these neglectful vibes that I don't want to actually portray. So I'm gonna go with something a little safer up here, which is just a coffee cup with a Zoom call, very remote work. And you can see that it's kind of hard to read the text right here because we've got white text and we've got kind of like part of the image that's bright and part of the image that's dark. And so if you go down over here where it says transparency and you lower that transparency, you'll notice that it is going to darken the actual image so that way your white text pops out a lot more. And finally, I'm going to add my own image here. Let's replace that. And even though it's not a big photo, I am still going to click on optimize image because I want to improve the loading time of my page as much as possible. 
And no landing page is complete without an image of the actual product or lead magnet that the person is signing up for. So if I go over to the top of the page and I click on this subheading that I'll change in just a second, if I click on this plus icon, it gives me the opportunity to add an image, links, all sorts of things right here. I am gonna click on image. I'm gonna pull my image here and I am also gonna make sure this optimize image box is checked. I can adjust the margin if I want. I can adjust the border radius. And just a quick side note, as I update this heading and subheading right here. We've worked to make these landing pages as fast and as easy for you to set up as possible. And with that comes some limited customization. So for example, I was able to just click this plus sign to add an image here, but there may be other areas of the landing page where you don't have that plus option to add new elements. So just keep that in mind. And the last thing I wanna do is change it to a font that is a little bit more my style. So I'm gonna click on general styles here. And I like the Laura for the headings and a P T sands for the body. And I can even go in individually and maybe make that section bold right there by highlighting it or underlining and italicizing specific sections or linking out to other resources as well. And so I think we've given our landing page a great first impression look, but if we don't optimize for mobile, we risk having over 60% of the visitors leave. A way to make sure that anyone who is looking on a mobile has a great viewing experience is to go up here and click on preview and then grab the edge of your browser and bring it in and you can start to see how things will change depending on the size of the device. And so right here is what it would look like if someone was looking on their mobile device. So I think we can confidently say we are ready for mobile. With the sign up form, we wanna minimize the amount of questions that we ask them so we don't create more friction for them, but we also want enough information to be able to effectively market to them. And effective marketing is knowing more than just their name and their email. Having the ability to create personalized emails isn't just a thing that's nice to have, it's essential as your list grows. Because as your audience grows, you want to be able to deliver the right emails to the right people at the right time. So the golden rule is ask for only what you need. If I go over here and click on this form, I'm actually going to delete the last name field because I don't really need that. Delete field and now it's gone. But I am interested in the ages of the kids of the dads who are getting this template because if I want to send out personalized emails for people with newborns, I probably don't need to send that to someone whose kids are teenagers. So I am going to add a new field right here with that plus button. I'm gonna save it as a tag, not a custom field. And I want this to be check boxes instead of drop down because someone may have younger kids and older kids so they can check multiple answers. If if you only want them to be able to check one, you'll use the drop down. And for label, I'm gonna write, what ages are your kids? And for the actual tags, if you click right here, this will show all the tags you already have. But if you don't have the tags made yet, you can just start typing the new tag ages zero to five. So that would be a tag that says, okay, this subscriber has kids ages zero to five. And then I'm gonna put ages six to 10. And so the names of the tags are right here, but if I wanna change what it actually says right here, maybe I don't put ages right there, I can delete that there while the tag still actually says ages zero to five. So for me, this is plenty. I don't need to ask for anything else. My last thing before I get to the incentive email is with my button that I changed the color of early. I don't wanna just say sign up. I wanna use more active language. So I'm gonna say, send me the template. And so to set up the incentive email, which is actually going to deliver this template to the subscribers, I'm gonna scroll up to the top and I'm gonna click on settings. I can customize the message that pops up on the screen as soon as they hit okay. But the main part is clicking over here where it says incentive. And I want to edit the email contents. So this email is serving two purposes for me. It's serving as a way for the subscriber to confirm their subscription. This is called a double opt-in. They did the first opt-in at the landing page and then them clicking on this button will actually say like, yes, I want to be a part of this newsletter and I want to get this Notion template. Having that double opt-in is gonna prevent my email list from getting spammed by a bunch of fake bot accounts. And secondly, I want to link that button to the template that they are going to get. So let me just customize this so it sounds a little bit more like me. So to actually link this button to the Notion template, I don't want to mess with this URL over here that says confirm email because that's gonna be the double opt-in that I talked about. I'm gonna click on save and then I can put a link to the Notion template back on this page where it says after they click the button, what do you want to happen? Well. 
I want to send them to the Notion template link. So I'll paste that right there. And if you have something that's not a link, but it's like a PDF downloadable, you can click on download and then just upload that file. Now I'm gonna click on save. And this is now ready to share with my audience. I can go up here and click on publish. And then I have this link right here that I can copy. And this is actually a great time to test my landing page. I'm gonna open up a new tab, paste my link. If you get to it and it looks like the changes haven't been made, sometimes that takes a few minutes, just refresh. And there it is. You can see all of the changes that I made and even some changes that I did when you weren't looking down here. And to test it, you can actually just go ahead and sign up for your own email and send me the template. Oh, look at that. Creator Network recommendations popping up on this page too. How cool. And here is the email that I just got. And you can click the links, make sure everything goes to where it needs to go. But it's pointless to even create a landing page if you can't keep those subscribers. And there are some big mistakes that a lot of creators are getting wrong. So check out this video right here where we will show you some of the top mistakes that creators are making in their emails so you can make sure that you avoid them. We'll see you over there.